I used to work as an overnight stalker for Walmart. For those of you who are unaware of what a Walmart is, it's pretty much an oversized convenience store, selling anything from clothing to food to electronics. If you are in need of something, chances are Walmart has it. As many of you are aware of what a stalker is, I suppose I should still explain what it is I did. Basically, whenever you walk into a store and you find yourself mindlessly glancing over all the various items on the shelves, somebody had to put them there. And that somebody was me. It's pretty much cut and dry as far as tasks go. Either you're taking inventory or unloading products from the back. However, for the most part, it's the movement of items from the back housing area to the shelves. For a lot of the youths in the U.S., working at Walmart is generally a first job location for those who don't wish to dive into the chaos that is fast food service. As for myself, I ended up with the job after recently getting laid off. The job market was rough at the time and me needing an immediate source of income, I found few other options. The job itself was fairly simple and the supervisors were quite lenient on some of the regulations. For example, during my shift, I would be allowed to listen to music on my iPod while I worked. I'd be allowed some moderate breaks. To be honest, as long as my section got finished and I wasn't late or belligerent, I was pretty much left alone to do my job. I spent the first few weeks acclimating to my new schedule and surroundings. A lot of time was spent learning the ropes, so to speak. Meeting other co-workers, learning what is expected of me, the ins and outs of taking inventory, as well as proper stocking etiquette. Yes, I said stocking etiquette. Such as don't block the aisles, refrain from leaving boxes strewn about, if a customer is attempting to get an item you are blocking, to move your cart out of the way completely. Apart from learning the job, I found the toughest transition to be the hours. Working the night shift can be somewhat daunting. Having to wake up when the sun is setting and coming home when the sun is rising takes some getting used to. Now, it's no secret that certain individuals frequently shop at Walmart. Even though customers come in all shapes and sizes, you do get some strange customers from time to time. From people dressed up in outrageous costumes to customers not dressed up in, well, anything. Hell, in my first week, a rather large gentleman walked up to me wearing nothing but those old school gym shorts. You know, the ones that are far too short for anyone to be wearing legally. He then demanded I tell him where the office supply department is. Why he's seeking the office supply department at 2 o'clock in the morning wearing gym shorts is beyond me. But that's not what this story's about. One night, after settling into my routine, I decided to take a much needed break. Normally, there is a specific area for employees to take breaks, but me being a smoker, I usually took my breaks out back where the shipment trucks and dumpsters are. It's not the greatest of places, but it's quiet and beggars can't be choosers, am I right? I was standing out there, enjoying the peace and quiet, watching the light from the single street lamp bounce off the green sludge the dumpsters were leaking, when I saw movement out of the corner of my eye. From where I was standing, there were two semi-trucks side by side. I thought I saw someone, or something, duck between the two when I glanced over. Now, I know this goes against every horror movie ever made in the history of anything, but I called out to it. Hello? And, just like in the movies, nothing responded. My mind first thought about a homeless junkie who was sleeping out back, but didn't want to have the police called on him for loitering. Then my imagination began to shift to a knife-wielding psychopath waiting for me to walk around that corner and slit my throat. Once that thought popped into my head, I quickly noped the hell out and went back inside. I went back to work and put the whole experience out of my mind. I put it out so far that I found myself going back outside again for my second break. It was around 4am and I was heading into the home stretch of my shift. As my hand rested upon the door is when that earlier experience came rushing back to me. After negotiating with myself that my need of nicotine was greater than my need to live, I pushed the door open and stepped outside. After walking outside, I instantly noticed something was wrong. The lone street lamp from before was off. 
Now, I had taken my breaks later in my shifts before when the sun was beginning to rise and the light outside would be turned off, but it was still pitch black outside. What I should have done was turn right back around and go back inside, but in a moment of tired confusion, I accidentally let the door behind me click shut. It was one of those external doors that are always locked from the outside to prevent thefts. Normally, I would just prop it open, but in my stupor, I forgot. Hearing that click, I felt my heart began to beat faster. I tried to calm myself, rationalizing that it was only a two-minute walk around the building to the front. So I stood there, in the dark, the only light emanating from the ember of my cigarette. Then I heard something that made the blood drain from my face. Footsteps, coming from the direction of the trucks. Slowly I turned to look over in that direction. This time I didn't say anything. I just stared. I found my eyes trying desperately to adjust to the darkness. After a moment, I could just make out the outline of the nearby truck. I attempted to comfort myself again by thinking it was just the homeless guy. Apart from the smoking, I'm actually in pretty decent shape, so unless the guy was a sumo wrestler, I figured I could handle myself in a fight. That's when I saw it. There was a part of the truck that was much darker than the rest of the metal. The dark spot stretched from the ground to near the top of the trailer. The shadow was in the shape of a man. There was a person standing next to the truck and they were facing me. My fight or flight instinct took over and I found myself doing something I never thought I would do in that situation. I shouted at whoever it was. You got a problem, pal? I said, trying to sound tough. I'm not sure what unnerved me more, the fact that it didn't respond or the fact that it remained motionless. For a brief moment, I thought the shadow that I was talking to was just some dark pain on the side of the truck. Then it moved. I watched it take a slow step towards me, and in that instant I almost screamed. The sudden movement made me jump back and thud against the door. I felt my throat constrict and my mind went blank. People always describe scary encounters as being frozen with fear. It wasn't that I couldn't move. It was just I couldn't remember how. I know it may sound strange, but I genuinely couldn't remember the most basic of functions, such as blinking. Watching this giant person grow closer to me made me feel like I was shrinking. I felt my eyes begin to water in response to not blinking. When my eyes finally couldn't take it anymore, they shut. In that nanosecond, my eyes were closed. This thing had closed the distance to me and was now about three feet away. I could see it much more clearly now. Its body was tall, but incredibly thin, like this creature hadn't eaten in years. Its appendages were equally as long as its torso. The skin on its body was like charred meat, almost like it was covered in ash. I didn't want to look up at its face, but my eyes drifted up without my consent. Its eyes were paler than my skin at that point. Seeing them up close, they almost glowed against the darkness. Its mouth was jagged and dripping some type of oozing liquid. What scared me the most was how utterly quiet it was, like it was some sort of hunter stalking its prey. Even at this distance, if I wasn't already aware of its presence, I probably wouldn't have seen it. Suddenly... It raised its bony arm towards me. The arm was almost long enough to reach me from where it stood. Whether it was instincts or watching too many martial arts movies, my brain suddenly came back online. I swatted its arm away and took off as fast as I could to get around the building. The entire time I sprinted around the building, I felt as if its fingers were grasping at the back of my neck. My lungs started to burn. I wanted to throw up. And if that thing touched me, I probably would have destroyed my pants. Rounding the corner, I crashed into a late-night customer's shopping cart, 
sending the contents flying. I quickly scrambled to my feet and looked behind me. I was alone. Well, alone with a very angry customer. My supervisor was, for lack of a better word, pissed. He scolded me, replaced the products for the customer, and demanded an explanation. At the risk of blaming my situation on a monster, I told him I was simply locked out and ran around to the front. That I wasn't paying attention and ran into the customer accidentally. For the most part, I was technically telling the truth. I didn't stick around at that job for much longer. I ended up finding a decent desk job uploading sales data for a local company. It's a strict job and very boring, but the pay is great and I don't have to work at night. I'm not sure if it was just my bad luck that the creature came after me, or if it simply likes to hang outside of stores when it's completely dark outside. But I'll never go to a Walmart at 4am ever again. And I would advise you all to do the same. <laughs>